people. Whew, this is a video. Yeah, it is. Um, it's a video that I've been working on for a bit and uh, that I've prepared lots of clips for and that I've been trying to wrap my head around how to present this product to you. And I thought I'd write everything down and give me some bullet points and all that stuff, but I'm not. I'm going to wing this. I'm going to try to hit all the points that I need to hit. I'm going to give you an overview of the Fender Tone Master, the differences in features between the Tone Master and the actual uh, tube version that's been around for ages. Then we're going to hear a lot of sounds in different configurations. And then I'm going to give you my two cents. How about that? We're going to play it a tiny little bit live in this video, but if I had everything set up so that we could do the full comparison with the one that we're gonna do later, which is pre-produced live here in the video, it would just be insane. So, what is the Fender Tone Master? I think it's a pretty damn ingenious move by Fender. There's modeling technology, or profiling technology, or whatever you want to call it. Modeling is someone sitting on a, a software and programming an amp the way that it should sound in real life, by coding. And, model, and, and profiling is having written a code that can take import responses from an amp and then reproduce that. So it's, it's pretty much taking a snapshot of the amp in a certain state. That's what the Kemper profiler does. Whereas the Helix, for example, from Line 6, is a modeling thing. Now, then there's things from Moore, for example, where they have profiles in a kind of a Helix modeler box. The lines are blurry. Point is, it's not tube, it's not real. Aha. So Fender said, I think, I literally have no idea what they said, but I assume that they were sitting in a room saying, profilers and modelers are not sexy. What do people actually want? They want the look of the Marshall behind them. Actually, they didn't say Marshall, they said Fender. <laughs> they said they want the look of the twin. They want the look of the basement. They want the look of the deluxe reverb behind them. And obviously they want the sound. And whether or not the sound can actually get you there is debatable and we're gonna talk about that. But primarily a lot of the feel when I'm on stage, a lot of the feel when I'm playing a piece of gear is what, how does it make you feel when you pick it up. And the way you feel directly moves into the music, okay? When you feel like you're playing a piece of plastic, I think most of us will react to the piece of plastic and just not create magic. So uh, playing the Kemper toaster isn't sexy. Maybe, I'm sure some of us can shut off the whole, I'm playing a modeler, I'm playing a piece of plastic, I'm playing the toaster, uh, but some of us can't. And if we want the real look and feel, and in German we say haptic, the how it touches, how you, how you handle it, um, it does make a difference. So Fender said, let's create our classic amps, the Deluxe Reverb and the Twin, with some of the benefits of modeling, but make them exactly like the classic amps. Well, uh, one of the benefits of modeling is super flexibility, because you have everything in one box. Well, they're not doing that. They said exactly like the other ones. Now, what's the benefit for us? Well, the Tone Master amps have no tubes. So the benefit is no tube buying, no tube biasing, no tube failure. That's good. No heat, no tube heat. Um, a tube amp has a transformer, and that also means weight. So less weight. In addition to reducing the transformer and the tubes and all that stuff, and pretty much giving us a modeler with a Class D power amp, they also changed the chassis because the chassis usually is plywood, birch plywood, which has weight. And uh, they went with pine. This thing right here, you can clearly see right here that that is pine. 
um, and that makes it lighter. And then also you can clearly see on the speaker right there, that's a Jensen, like in the tube one, but that's a neodymium speaker. So it's a uh, different, different magnet, something like that. It's a much lighter speaker. So they reduced the weight by half. It's about 11 kilo. You pick it up, you're like, I don't care about this anymore. La 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 la. And the deluxe reverb isn't a heavy amp, but you don't really want to lug it around everywhere. Now the twin, that's a heavy as fuck amp, and you definitely don't want to carry that around. That's 80 watts, 2, 112, or 212, all that stuff. That is heavy. Having a lighter version of it, yay. So benefit to us. Less maintenance or no maintenance, except for if something breaks, you can't take it to your local tube guy. You have to send it in. Fender needs to fix it. But what should break? Um, much, much, much reduced weight. And two-thirds of the cost. Now, are these super cheap? No. But the two-thirds of the cost. Now, the Deluxe Reverb that you see over there, that's the tube version right there. That is about 1500 1500 1600 And the... Uh, Tone Master modeling version is 950 right now. So it's about two thirds of the price. The only difference in the front that you can see, there's two differences. The tube version doesn't have the Tone Master logo in the bottom right. And um, then there's something else written under the light on the tube version. Now in the back, it looks very different. The Tone Master, let's talk about that first, in the back has a DI out with uh, two modeled mics. Now, Brett Kingman in his video said, uh, mic number one is an SF57 and mic number two is a ribbon uh, 121. I don't know where he got that information because I, uh, I literally couldn't find that information anywhere. So I'm calling it mic one and mic two. Mic two is rounder and bigger. Uh, but you have a DI out, so you can run this. Uh, not quiet. It has a... Uh, an attenuator, a power soak, which actually is kind of bullshit, because what this is, it's a volume. It's it's literally a master volume, because this is a class D amp, it doesn't need to be attenuated. But I love that Fender actually disguised it in a clicky switch, like an attenuator would be, um, so that we are kind of fooled into thinking this is a tube attenuator, when it isn't. What you cannot do, is it getting it actually completely silent? This is something something point one watt or whatever. So it's very, 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 very quiet, but you cannot completely turn it off. Okay? Uh, and then there's standby and power, which is also weird. Why does it have mute? Why does it have a standby switch? It doesn't need that. It's not a tube app. But I love it because everything is done so that we have the illusion of a tube app. Again, then there's the chassis and the speaker. And the foot switch also looks different. Um, so the foot switch for the Tomaster is more of a modern foot switch, reverb and vibrato. And the uh, cable that comes with it can be detached, whereas the 60, reverb 65 is a very classic -y, more flimsy kind of two-button foot switch with an attached cable uh, just to be more authentic. Um, further, when we're talking about attached cable, I don't know why on the uh, Tone Master it's a normal uh, power cable that you can detach. On the tube version, it is a fixed power cable. So if that power cable breaks or someone runs over it, you're shit out of luck. You're gonna have to solder something. I don't know why it is attached for good. That's something that I definitely criticize on the tube version. Um, the tube version has uh, standby and power, but there's little rubber things over the switches. And it has speaker out. It has a speaker out that goes to the built-in, uh, big-ass magnet, heavy Jensen C12K, uh, and then an external speaker, and then a foot switch input, I gotta check. Um, whereas the Tone Master, sadly, does not have an external speaker out. Now, I was discussing that with Harry Holden, Harry and the Guitar, great channel, um, and I was like, well, you know what, I would like to bitch about that, that the speaker is attached for good and you can't attach an external speaker. However, the whole idea is light 
inconvenient. If you're taking an extra cab, then why get the light one? What, 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 why get the one that's super light and convenient to carry if you're carrying more shit? So, hmm. Also, they need to have something on the big one uh, so people buy it. Now let's talk about pricing for a second. People are saying this could be much cheaper. Yes. Based on the tech in there, yes, it could be much cheaper. Absolutely could. Why would they make it cheaper? It would be ridiculous of Fender, and I fully support them there, to offer this for 400 bucks. Because if it actually was just as good as the original or the tube version, then wouldn't they completely destroy the market for their own product? See, at two-thirds of the price, and yes, it has a DI out and an attenuator volume knob, um, but no speaker out and blah, blah, blah. Uh, it's an alternative at two-thirds of the price, but there's still a little bit of a hump. And if you really want the tubes, you can get the tubes. At 400 for the Tone Master, it's a huge jump to the big one. Strategically, pricing-wise, it makes total sense to offer that at 950 and the other one at 15 something. Um, other than that, they're supposed to be pretty much the same damn thing. And we're going to cover that in a bit. So what we do right, right now, quickly, is... Um, oh, by the way, uh, Jensen, when I posted pictures on Instagram... Um, a uh, nice guy from Italy, Ignazio, who was working with Jensen and was kind of, I think, as far as I understand, the go-between between Jensen and Fender to develop these speakers, uh, sent me loads of information about Jensen speakers. Um, he, uh, the Jensen developed or, or released a set of speakers this year, uh, I think the N-series, which comes with big magnets or, or neodymium, and they're specifically designed for modelers to deal with the different frequency response, who knows what they made specific specific speakers to make modelers loud. And this is what's in here, but not one uh, of the standard line. This is a N12K, I think. It's in the Edimium, specifically for modeler, uh, Jensen speaker designed with Jensen and Fender for this amp. So we're going to check out some sounds. No pedals, no anything. You will hear that in a bit in the shootout. What I have here is my uh, McMull S Classic. It's about one of the best S-type guitars you can get on the planet. Fender Custom Shops makes nice, nice, nice stuff. No question about that. But this is also nice. Um, so, there's the normal channel, which literally only has volume, treble, and bass. Um, also, what I found out, sorry to, to, to flip it in there here. Um, on this one, when you have the trem, you can just dial up the intensity, no foot switch necessary. I think on the tube version, uh, the tremolo didn't work at all unless I connected the foot switch. I think the foot switch is necessary on the tube version to get the trem working. On the Tone Master, it is not. So here's the, ooh. The normal channel. dial up the reverb as much as I want to. There is nothing happening. It's just a clean sound. Now some people might want these amps cranking, which with the tube version means volume. How many people do really use the deluxe reverb dialed up, cranked up so that it drives? Yes, you can do it, but generally these are clean amps and pedal platforms. That's the idea. Um, I asked Harry, who is a deluxe reverb aficionado, he knows loads more uh, about this amp than I do, and he said, rarely does that happen. Uh, it, it, it can result in cool sounds, but with the tube version, it means getting very loud. Now here... <laughs> Let's go make it quieter with the attenuator.
It's a little bit fizzly in the high end there. Um, let's look at EQ. So, what does two do? I literally don't know. That's a horrible chord. So, we go to the vibrato channel, which is where it's at, which is technically what I would use all the time. It's not attenuated. It's very spanky. Treble bass, same thing. We got reverb here. surf music okay it does that and then we got the little bit of reverb in there we got the tremolo that's intensity and uh, speed It's beautiful. If you ask me, the, the verb, the trem, it's all identical to the big one, but you can build your own opinion on that, which is, well, we're pretty much done showing you this thing so far. So let's go into clips. So first of all, we're gonna hear both amps. First one, then the other. You don't know which one. Um, we're gonna do this blind. You hear a clip recorded with a looper, so it's gonna be exactly the same uh, guitar signal. We're both miking them with a Lewitt MTP 440 in pretty much exactly the same position, going through uh, the brand new VT737 by Avalon plugin, unison plugin, on the Apollo from Universal Audio. Uh, I'm running into an Apollo Twin channel 1 and 2, running the same plugin with exactly the same DB on the input. Everything is exactly the same. So you should be able to really tell the difference if there is one. So we're going to go normal channel, some clean, 
Uh, and after you heard both clips, I switched back and forth. And you can see in the corner there are the waveforms and you can see uh, when it's actually switching. Can you hear when it's switching? D is there a difference between the two? Who knows? Go! <laughs> Okay, moving on. We're gonna take the normal channel, the Strat again, and uh, we're cranking it a bit, I think to seven or eight or something, and uh, let's see what that sounds like. <laughs> to the vibrato channel and uh, checking out the difference in reverb if there is any. Let's go! Let's do the same thing, but for tremolo, and see if you can hear any difference. They were set up the same way. Enjoy.
Now we're getting into the tricky bits. So far, mostly of what we've heard was clean and pretty comparable. Now I'm taking the Friedman Metro D into the vibrato channel, no reverb, no tremolo, but I'm cranking it up fully to 10. No attenuation on the Tone Master, just blatantly cranking up the volume to everything that's there. Let's see how they drive. <laughs> Let's stay with drive again. We're taking the volume back, but we're actually adding pedals, which is a very important question. How do they handle pedals? We know the Deluxe Reverb is one of the pedal platforms out there, well, since pedals pretty much exist. So let's check out the vibrato channel uh, with an overdrive. <laughs> Well, some of you are not overdrive fans, you like fuzz. And a pedal platform app needs to be able, it needs to be able, it needs to be able to handle a fuzz. Here's a Thorpey Fallout Cloud with both amps. <laughs> We had overdrive, we had fuss, let's go complete insane and do something you should never do, which is try to meddle with a Fender Deluxe Reverb. We're going to use an Ormsby Hype 7 string guitar with the G3 from Rev and brutally murder both amps. <laughs> Thank you. 
Yeah, that didn't work in either amp, did it? So it's not a metal amp in any shape or form. Um, last but not least, when it comes to pedals, let's see how it handles a compressor with some analog delay, but we're gonna go back to clean and see how much difference is there. Okay then, before we go into what I think, uh, let's go into how the DI out works. And first we're gonna do some clean sounds, uh, straight into the Apollo Twin again, same setup, all that stuff, but XLR out. And we're gonna go speaker off, which will sound like going into a board, uh, pretty horrible. And then with the two different uh, mics on. <laughs> we wouldn't be doing a good job if we didn't try the same thing with the channel cranked. So we're going to crank that up to eight or something, get some drive going and see how the DI out handles drive. <laughs> questions which one was which in those examples okay I'm gonna tell you the blue one on top was actually the tone master and the orange one at the bottom was the tube version now so that you don't have to go back and do that again I'm actually uploading all these clips by themselves again 
but I'm writing very clear tone master and tube on it. So that comes out in about two, three hours. Check that out. That's an extra video for your convenience. Have fun with it. So what do I think? I think the concept's cool. It's a placebo. We know it's not tube. We bought it. We're very aware that it's not tube. Yet, it works. There's a stupid clicky switch on the back telling me I'm an attenuator when I very clearly know it's just a volume knob because it's a freaking class D power amp. They wouldn't have had to do that in a clicky thing. But it works because it makes me feel that this thing is a deluxe reverb. Now, if I'm a jazz guy, a country guy, and I have this on stage behind me, I feel like I'm playing a deluxe reverb. It looks like I'm playing a deluxe reverb. I'm not carrying a deluxe reverb. I'm not maintaining a deluxe reverb. You can probably bump this quite a bit more than the tube version and it's all fine. So that being said, it delivers at two thirds of the price. I think the concept is great. I wish more companies would follow suit and do this. Give us the look and the feel of an amp, but you know, make it lighter and do some modelly things. However, for me, modeling always has the following sound. It's very thick in the bass. There's this unnatural thickness. And then something in the highs that's fizzly in a way that's digital. And that holds true when you're going DI. How is it when you actually have a speaker? Well, in this case, they don't have the same speaker. They tried to do the digital version of the C12K because it's lighter and more suited to the need that they had here. Now, I can't tell you whether or not the difference in sound that we're hearing when it comes to drive is the speaker or the fact that it's modeling. But that big low end uh, that you could clearly hear versus the tube version is what I hear in modeling. So it still sounds like a modeler. When? Haha, -ha, wait a second. We're talking about drive. When we're talking about clean, I think it delivers 98% exactly what the tube version does. It's about half a percent more rounded off. And it is when you're really, really, really paying attention on the low notes, a little bit thicker. There's that thick model thickness. Um, but that's it. So when you want to use a deluxe reverb as a clean platform, as a clean amp, it's there. I see almost no need to go to the big one when you're running it clean. Now let's look at the Deluxe Reverb. Historically, it was never meant to distort. Came on 65 or something. Hendrix started distorting amps later. Pedals weren't really around back then. Back then people played clean amps. So, it does exactly what the Deluxe Reverb was meant to do when it was conceived. Play clean. It does exactly what it was meant to do. Give me beautiful reverb and tremolo. That's what the Deluxe Reverb's mission was. Now, it turned into, let's crank it up because Hendrix cranks things up so I can crank things up. And the tube version does that beautifully. Um, when you do the same thing on the Tone Master, the low end comes out way too much and that drive is a little bit too... In the high end, you can hear it a little bit, but it's primarily that low end and the frequency spectrum changes drastically. Same thing with pedals. It sounds all of a sudden as if the speaker, which when we heard it clean, was exactly the same. It all of a sudden sounds like it's a completely different speaker. So... That tells me a whole bunch of things. That tells me that Fender designed the Tone Master to be what the Lelux Reverb was supposed to be, a clean amp. And it focuses on that and it does it amazingly. It shows me that Fender focused on making that speaker to be the clean speaker. Now, when I'm driving the tube version, the low end goes away. It is less low endy than when I'm playing clean. And it gets very mid-focused, whereas the Tone Master blows up the low end and the mids kind of go away. So that's why it sounds so drastically different when you play them A-B. 
Um, which, uh, what does it mean for us? I is it good or not? Well, as a deluxe reverb, in the intended function of the deluxe reverb from the get-go, yes, it delivers 98%. But it's cheaper, and it's lighter, and it's less prone to breaking. As a deluxe reverb, the way that we use it nowadays, maybe cranking it, which I don't think many people do, I think it does that okay-ish, it blows up a little bit in the low end, as a pedal platform for drives, fuzzes, not distortion. Um, but as a pedal platform, no, it is not as good as the real deal, the big thing. It isn't. Um, now, Fender can be mad at me for saying that. However, what I'm recommending is buy the tube version, which is a Fender. So, no, no, don't buy the Fender if you want to work with pedals. Buy the Fender. Or, if you don't want to go 50 and 1600, if you want to go slightly less than 950, buy the Hot Rod. Hot Rod Deluxe is literally the pedal platform. Now, does that have a DI out? No. Is that super lightweight? Hell no. Um, uh, do you have to service it? Yes. Does the second channel on the Hot Rod uh, uh, suck? Is it a good drive channel? No, it's not. The Hot Rod is a brilliant amp when it comes to that clean channel, which is rounder than these, and running pedals into them. So if you want a pedal amp in that price range, get a Hot Rod Deluxe. So Fender, I'm sorry, I'm recommending another Fender product. If you want a Deluxe Reverb that handles pedals the way that a Deluxe Reverb is supposed to handle pedals, get a Deluxe Reverb. If you want a Deluxe Reverb for cleans and everything that a Deluxe Reverb used to be for, then get the Tone Master. If you're playing jazz, clean country stuff, a little bit of drive is fine. As soon as you get more overdrive, the more drive you put onto it, the more it goes away from the actual sound that you're expecting. Now, how much that has to do with that speaker, I can't tell you. Um, I have frequency response curves for the Jensen's all this. I don't know how much that tells us. All I know is I love the concept, and I think they absolutely nailed it when it comes to cleans. Crank up the gain to where it's just at the other bridge or edge, 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 edge of breakup. Edge of where it's just at the edge of breakup. Great. Attenuated. Take the volume down. Um, great. Now it doesn't have an external speaker out. Hmm. But it feels and looks just like it's supposed to. It sounds just like it's supposed to when you play it clean. Don't put a seven string in there with the ref pedal. Okay. Um, so, if you are the purist, carry the damn amp, okay? Do it. You have, then you have to carry it, then you have to change the tubes, and you have to do all the stuff that you have to do that we don't like doing, but the payoff is we get a tube amp the way that we love it. If you're playing clean and slightly, slightly, slightly overdriven uh, at gigs and you don't want to carry anymore, or you have a, a, a beautiful living room and you want that Fender amp there and you want to be able to turn it down because your wife is watching TV. It's it's great. I'm pointing at it the whole time, but it's so freaking short that the camera can't. Thank you, Leslie. You know, I think this is a great product as far as cleans go. There is very little reason to buy that one. If I have anything else, buy that one. So... Um, if you don't believe me, go rewatch that video with the sounds, or go and watch uh, watch it where you have the comparison. Uh, that's all I can say. I think Fender did a phenomenal job matching it to the Deluxe Reverb, matching it to whatever people might want to put into it. I don't know. You decide. You comment. You either you're gonna say anyway. Well, I can buy a katana for much less. Yes, he can buy a katana for much less. Is it gonna look and feel like a deluxe reverb? No, it's not. So shut your trap. Oh, you're gonna ride that anyway. Um, links below. Thanks for watching. Thanks for Fender. Uh, thanks to Fender. Oh, by the way, Fender is paying for this video, um, and Fender supplied both amps, and I get to keep both amps. So hell yeah, Fender. They're cool. I gotta say this. Okay, when it comes to how to do YouTube. 
um, I asked for the tube version so that I can actually do a fair comparison. And I said, I'm going to send it back after the video. And they said, no, don't. Now that's cool. Did I still say what I wanted to say? Yes, I did. In the end, it's by a fender. By either one of those or by a deluxe uh, uh, hot, hot rod. It's the pedal master. It really is. Thanks, Leslie, for switching. Links below and animals at the end. Mm -hmm.